Today, I'm introducing something new to the channel. It's going to be called the eBuzz Double Feature. Basically, what that means is I'm going to be covering two topics in one video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Stormfish OS. Now, in the past, I've looked at the KDE Neon respins that Stormfish OS is based on. But they also have an Arch version, which I'm going to cover today. I'm also going to be covering the most recent update of Manjaro. For the simple fact, I did a video not too long ago telling you that an update had completely broken my system. Well, Manjaro has come out with 21.2.5, and we're going to take a look at it and see if those issues have been taken care of. That's what we're covering today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is going to be brought to you by the eBuzz Central Store. Do you love using Linux? Do you want to show your pride in using Linux? Well, we have several different ways for you to do that. We have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, long sleeve tees, hats, phone cases, stickers, mugs, water bottles, and steel tumblers. And we have everything from Arch Linux, Linux Mint, Fedora, and we even have some new additions this week. I want to go ahead and cover real quick. I sent a message out to all my community, but I'm going to show you those real quick. These will all be available in t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts and stickers and you name it, we have it. One of the new additions is Losing My Mind, One Distro at a Time, which I really do like that shirt. And then the other addition on top of our fedora and Manjaro is the Don't Try This At. Great shirts, but like I said, we have everything from Fedora, Linux Mint, Manjaro, Ubuntu, just swing on over and check it out. And if for some reason you don't find what you're looking for on the store, please drop us a comment and we'll do our best to get it added to the store. Now we're going to swing back over to the SourceForge site. Stormfish OS. Like I said in the past, I've covered the KDE Neon respin that they do. But what we're going to cover today is the Arch version. And they do have an update. It basically states that Stormfish KDE 13 final version has been released, which is your KDE Neon respin. And I talked to Ben the other day. He's the head developer of the Stormfish OS Arch Edition. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. He's put a lot of hard work into it. He's worked a lot of bugs out of it. And he's fixed the Calamari's installer. And as everybody knows, the Calamari's installer has been having issues across a lot of different distributions. So it wasn't just a problem with this one. So what we're going to do is zip on over to the Stormfish Arch version desktop. And if you download the Arch version of Stormfish OS put it on a USB or load it into a virtual machine. This is the screen you're met with. It is the XFCE desktop environment, so it's very lightweight. We will take a look at that here in a second inside the terminal. You've got a single panel up top. You've got a nice wallpaper right here. And then you've got a couple icons on your desktop, which is trash. And then install system. Of course, we're in a virtual machine, so we're not going to do that. I'm just going to run it in live mode. But it is the Calamar Ace installer. And then you've got your home folder right here. Now, if you right click on the screen, of course, you're going to get create a launcher, create folder, open terminal applications. What I want to see is if we can change the wallpaper real quick and you get a few different wallpapers right here. I'm going to go with something with a little bit of color and switch it to that. I like that. I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to close out of that. If you come up to the panel up top and you've got date and time right here, notifications, percentage of battery that's left if you're on a laptop, sound internet and then right here it'll show you what your updates are so let's go ahead and click on updates and as you can see it has paymac installed out of the box at present we have about 790 megabytes of updates that are ready to go we're not going to do that because we are in virtual box but i do want to show you a couple things you need to do if you do want to try this and install it things that you need to do with paymac before you do anything else you need to come up to these three dots right here on some distributions this will be a hamburger menu but just click on that and click Preferences. You'll want to zip on over to Third Party and go ahead and enable a UR support, which is your Arch user repository. If you're not familiar with that, this is the place you go to get software and applications that aren't available on official repositories, but have a really good track record of people keeping them up to date and making it easy for you to install those applications on an Arch system. Then you want to zip on over and check out General. On some distributions right down here, it'll have your refresh mirrors. This one doesn't, so you don't need to concern yourself with that. But you can go down here and you can browse for different software that you might be interested in, or maybe even go up here and do a search. 
with it not being refreshed, I don't know if it's going to show me anything, but I'm going to go with OBS Studio and hit enter. And because it isn't refreshed, I don't have OBS showing up here. So I think you can get it in the AUR. There is an OBS Studio right here, but they do have an official repository for that. So if you do install it in those mirrors refresh, once they're refreshed, you'll get a full list and full capabilities to download any software or applications you might want. So we're going to go ahead and close out of PayMac right now. Zip back up to the top. You do have a little weather widget right here. It's showing Louisville, Kentucky. What I'm going to do real quick is see if we can change the configuration of this for my location. So let's go to properties. There's location. Let's go ahead and change that. And let's put in Dallas, Texas. Hit enter. And there's Dallas, Dallas County, Texas, United States. So we'll click on that and click OK. And now it has been updated and it's giving me my local weather as opposed to what the weather is in Kentucky. And then, of course, once you have your email set up, you'll be able to check your email right here. You just one click it. Now, if you come over on the panel and right click, you do have properties, move, remove, or you could add items, panel preferences. What I'm going to do is zip on over to properties and you do have a separator that is transparent. I'm going to leave that alone and we can close out of that go back up here and go to panel and panel preferences. And right here, you get a lot of different ways to customize your panel. Right now, it's in horizontal mode. You could change that to vertical if you wanted to, or you could make it a desk bar. I'm going to leave it as horizontal. And then, of course, you could lock the panel. And then you can automatically hide the panel, either never, intelligently, or always. Intelligently hide just means if you open a window full screen, the panel would disappear or always means it would always disappear if you're not hovered over it. I'm going to leave that on never. Now row size, your row is what you got up here that holds your open applications or some, anything you might have pinned here. Okay. Now you could change that row size just by clicking. And as you can tell, the panel starts getting bigger and the icons start getting bigger. They scale up. And then of course you could change your rows. You could have two rows if you wanted to, or just one row. I do see people sometimes switch this to two and then their open applications would actually stack over here. I'm not a big fan of that, but if you're somebody that's doing a lot of multitasking and you need to have that, it's available in XFCE. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and we're going to zip on over to the application launcher. Let's open that up and you've got your favorites right here. Recently used all applications or you could break it down to accessories, which gives you things like bulk rename, catfish file search, disks calculator, screenshot tool, task manager, screenshot. They got a nice, easy screenshot tool. You can do the entire screen, active window, or you could select a region. So we'll select a region, go up here and select that region. It takes it. And then of course you could save it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Zip bone back down to accessories. Then you've got your Thunar file manager. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. I like Thunar. Thunar is one of those file managers that doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it's powerful and lets you get things done. You've got your usual suspects over here. And then, of course, you've got your home folders right here. I do like the theme that you're using here. It's kind of a teal theme on white. Of course, I love dark themes, but I'm going to leave this one in a light theme because I just really like the way it looks. So that's Thunar File Manager. Let's go ahead and close out of that. So let's zip back on over to the application launcher. Let's go back down here to accessories. We've already looked at everything there. Then you've got your development, which is CMake, Meld, Games. You've got Steam and Lutris out of the box. Graphics, Internet, Multimedia. Office, you've got Abbey Word, Dictionary, Settings, Add and Remove Software. We've already looked at PayMac. Then you've got your Appearance. What I want to do right here is just type in Settings and go to Settings Manager. We'll go ahead and maximize that. You have a lot of different settings you can adjust right here. You've got Appearance. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you've got a few different styles you can go with right here. Add Way to Add Way to Dark, High Contrast. You can change your icons. You get quite a few different looking icons out of the box. Fonts, you can come over here and change your fonts if you want, change the kind of font, change the size of the font. You can custom DPI set right here. And then, of course, your hinting, you can adjust that if you want to. And then settings. So let's go back to settings. Then you've got clipboard manager, desktop, file manager status, panels, screensaver, window manager tweaks, workspaces. 
You just have a lot of different ways in here to make this operating system feel more personable to you and adjust it to the way you like to use an operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of settings and zip back on over and we'll scroll down. You've got your system. Let's go ahead and open that up. Bulk rename, GR sync, manage printing, sensor viewer, task manager, XFC terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, we are using Arch Linux. It's kernel version 5.16.12. It's got 1,236 packages from Pac-Man. You're on the Arc Dark high contrast theme. Right now it says we're using 700 megabytes of memory of the three gigabytes that I have issued to the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and do an HTOP real quick so we can see exactly what we're using. As I stated, I've got about three gigs issued to the machine. In HTOP with just the terminal open, you're using about 624 megs. I would call this upper end lightweight. The reason I say that is I do have other XFC desktops that run in the neighborhood of 200 to 500 megabytes at rest. I classify that lightweight. So this is mid to upper lightweight, but it's still going to be useful if you put it on a older system or maybe you want to put it on a newer system and you want the thing to just fly. So I'm going to close out of this. And one thing I do want to go over here, Ben has put a lot of work into this operating system. And if you're somebody that uses Arch, let's say like an Endeavor or a Manjaro or something like that, that makes it real easy to get into, this is up there with those distribution guys. It has PayMac installed out of the box, so it makes adding software and removing software easy for those that still don't feel too comfortable with the terminal. It's got a lot of decent software out of the box, but it's not bloated. You don't get, like with a Manjaro, you have a lot of bloat, I believe, in Manjaro nowadays. You have to go in and take things out that you're not going to use. It comes out of the box with the only Office desktop editor and things like that. But if you're somebody that likes the Endeavors or likes the Manjaros and maybe wants something just a little lighter, I would definitely suggest giving Stormfish OS a shot. The Arch Edition. Now, when I put the link below, when you go over, you're going to notice that they have a Debian based edition and you're going to have the arch edition make sure you click on the arch edition and download it and give it a shot now if you're somebody that's not into arch give their debian edition a shot now the next part of this video i'm going to cover manjaro its last update seemed to break a lot of things so really the question is has the new 20.2.5 update fixed those breaks and has it made it operational again well, let's zip on over to the desktop and find out. And this is the Manjaro desktop. First thing I want to do is zip on over to settings. Let's go all the way down to about. And you'll see that we are running the 5.15.28 kernel, KDE Plasma version 5.24.3, KDE Frameworks 5.91.0, and the graphics platform is X11. This is the newest release of Manjaro. And in my last video, there were a lot of things that went kind of crazy on me. Now, the first thing I want to do is zip on over. Let's open up a virtual box. And as you know, in the first part of this video, I did do a review and cover Stormfish OS, the Arch version. That's what's loaded in virtual box right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. And when I did this with the previous update, it wouldn't load. My PC locked up. I had a lot of different issues. And what we're going to do right now is just load it up and see if everything goes smoothly with no lockups and no restarts. Now I am experiencing the login bug again. Every now and then when I try to log in, it's not recognizing my keyboard, but a quick restart fixes that and it's not on every new boot. So just something to keep in mind and Stormfish pops right up. And if we go over here, we start doing some clicks and it changes things around. It makes things nice and easy. No lockups there. If we come over here and open up file manager, that works. Everything's running smooth. Let's go over here and let's open up something else. Let's go ahead and open up a document scanner. That's opened up, no lockups, everything's running smooth inside. So it seems as though Manjaro has fixed some issues with running virtual machines inside of Manjaro. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and close out of this. And I'm gonna go down here, let's go ahead and make that that and then we'll close out of it and power that off. Another issue that I was having with the previous update is if I went in and opened up Shotcut, 
and then wanted to drop something into the playlist so I could actually do some editing, it wouldn't drop it. It wouldn't show it. It wouldn't let me drag it over. So I'm going to drop that there. As you can see, it's letting me drop it. I can resize my window the way I'm supposed to. And then if I drag and drop that, it drops it down and it lets me edit it. Now, as you can see, there's no audio on this track, so it's not going to show any waveform there. So what I'll do is I'll zip on up here. I'm trying to remember that's my intro. Let's make sure we've got audio to edit. We'll go ahead and come down here. We'll add a video track. Then we'll drop the intro in right there. And as you can see, my audio shows up just fine. So if I hit play, it's got my closing credits. And then it should start playing my intro music. And it does. So they've fixed that. Whatever issue was there that was affecting Shotcut is no longer there. Another problem I had was my audio was horrible. I would come down here, pick a specific microphone to use, and it wouldn't let me use it. But now those are fixed. As a matter of fact, I'm recording this video at present in Manjaro, and my audio is sounding better than it has in quite a while. And I could open OBS. I'm not going to do that because all it's going to do is give you an infinite loop of visions and pictures. But I was having an issue with every time I opened OBS, I had to set it to screen record as opposed to just setting it, and then every time I went back in, it was ready to be used. Don't have to do that anymore. That's been rectified. There's no longer an issue with that. And most importantly, I think, out of everything, is if I come down here, I'm going to go ahead and run HTOP. And right now, as you can see, I will link my previous video so you can actually look at it. But right here in my previous video, with just OBS running, and terminal open running HTOP, I was running over four gigabytes of RAM. Okay, right now I have eight gigabytes of RAM in this laptop. With OBS running in the background and terminal open, I'm at a nice two gigs, which is what I'm usually at when I was using my Manjaro install. So, just to let you know, I'm answering your question now. The newest update of Manjaro fixed all the issues I was having prior to that. Now, I do want to point out, too, when you download Manjaro, you put it on a USB or open it into a virtual machine, or you install it, when you get to the login screen, give Wayland a try. If it doesn't work, log out, go to the bottom left, lower corner of your login screen, and switch over to X11, and you will be just fine. I did notice that Wayland was having a few effects on different things that I was doing. I just want to let you all know if you run into those problems, you can do that on the login screen and you should be okay. Pipewire doesn't seem to be getting in my way at the present, so I'm just letting you all know. All the previous problems I had with Manjaro are gone. They seem to be fixed. They seem to be rectified. So if you were one of those out there that was having the same issues with Manjaro that I was or similar issues, zip on over, download the newest update. It'll take care of all your problems, I promise. Well, that's pretty much it. We covered Stormfish OS, the Arch version, and we covered the newest update of Manjaro. Tell me what you think. Are either one of these something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to zip on over to the eBuzz Central store. Check it out. If you find something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if there's something you would like to see on the store, please drop a comment and let us know. Also, if you like the double feature concept that I want to start doing every Saturday, let me know in the comments below. And if you don't like it, please let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.